morning. Welcome to worship again with Manitowoc Cooperative Ministry, a joint ministry of First Presbyterian Church and Peace United Church of Christ. We are glad that you're here. We all know that it's Memorial Day weekend, and so we have a special um, part in just a few moments in the service to remember those women and men who died in service to our nation. But we're glad that you're here right now. If you're on Facebook Live, we encourage you to use the chat box on the side. Let us know your prayers, um, comment back and forth, um, share what you're thinking about as we, as we talk, as we pray, you can interact with one another. So this will be a great opportunity for us to worship together as a community, no matter where we're at. The other thing that we're doing that's a little bit different today that you may notice some different things is we're running our entire PowerPoint through the Zoom link today, sharing. If that doesn't mean anything to you, that's okay. Um, what I want you to know is, is that when we do some transitions, it may be a little bit choppier today as we're trying to figure this out, but it's our next step. Um, in being able to do um, worship even more effectively and creatively and also from different locations um, when we do this. So again, if there's some little time in between, just bear with us on that. But as we gather for worship today, there are two celebrations um, that we want you to be aware of today. Um, the first is a celebration of life eternal. So today we remember and we celebrate the life of Marion Morgan. Uh, Marion passed away on Thursday evening. Um, she had been a very active part of Peace United Church of Christ for many years. And she was surrounded um, by part of her family when this time happened and we just send our prayers to go out to all of Marion's family, but also we celebrate, though, the gift of life eternal, knowing that she lives even now, reunited with her beloved husband, and she is able to watch and to continue to be a part of our fellowship. So not only does our fellowship join from living rooms and dining room tables, wherever we may be, we're reminded particularly this day that our fellowship also includes the joy of life eternal in the kingdom of heaven. Today we also celebrate the birth of Benjamin David, the grandson of Anne and Gary Gold. Um, the the uh, little boy was actually born on his mother's birthday. Um, so it was an extra joyful day in the hospital that day. So we just want to celebrate that, that life is a joy and life eternal and life that's right here. So again, we are happy and we're glad that you're able to join us in worship today. Just take a few deep breaths. Put your hands over your heart. And let us continue our time of worship as we remember the men and women throughout the ages that have given their life to this nation. We remember and honor those whose lives were given in service to us. The 184,000 who served in the Revolutionary War and 4,435 who died in that service. The 286,703 who served in the War of 1812 and 6,765 who died in that service. 78,718 who served in the Mexican War and 13,283 who died in that service. The 3,500,000 who served in the Civil War and the 530,000 who died in that service. The 306,760 who served in the Spanish-American War 
and 2,446 who died in that service. The 4,743,826 who served in World War I and the 116,708 who died in that service. The 16,353,659 who served in World War II and 407,316 who died in that service. The 5,764,143 who served in the Korean War, and 33,651 who died in that service. The 8,744,000 who served in the Vietnam War, and 58,168 who died in that service. The 467,539 who served in the Persian Gulf War, and the 268 who died in that service. The 320,000 who served and are serving in the Afghanistan war and 492 and counting who have died in that service. And the 1,680,000 who served and are serving in the Iraq war and the 4,400 and counting who have died in that service. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, these are the numbers, the sacrifices of those who said yes to serving for the sake of others. We trust that you have lovingly welcomed all of these who have died home into your loving arms and we ask for your ongoing blessing, your Holy Spirit hovering before and behind, above and below those who continue to struggle with the effects, the after effects of war. Bless them and their families that they may all come to see and know your amazing and unconditional mercy and love for them. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let us join in song, This is My Song.
Amen. Let us pray. Most gracious God, illumine us this day as we hear your word read and proclaimed. May we become your beloved community. May we be able to live into your words of hope this day and every day. So come, Lord Jesus, welcome our prayers and illumine us this day with your very presence in our lives. Amen. Pastor Judine, are you there to read scripture today? I'm right here, ready and waiting. I apologize. Okay, you're on. Friends, today we read from 1 Peter's 4th chapter and 5th chapter. He writes, Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in so far as you are sharing Christ's suffering, so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed because the spirit of glory, which is the spirit of God, is resting on you. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves. Keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil, prowls around, looking for someone to devour. Resist him. Steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. And after you have suffered for a while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. So friends, it's an appropriate scripture passage today as we look to tomorrow for Memorial Day and how people in fact have suffered in life. And you know, is there a glorification basically at the end of their life? And this is what we're celebrating tomorrow for um, our veterans who died in service. So it is an appropriate scripture passage for this day. But I'd like to just unpack it just a tiny bit yeah. This is written in the time of uh, Nero as the emperor with great persecution going on, about 67 AD or so. And Nero is trying to teach these uh, new Christians a lesson, basically, that what it is that they're believing in, how uh, they're believing in Christ, is pure folly. So he's making an example of all the Christians that he can in fact gather up. And I mean, he's a pretty brutal human being. He basically takes the Christians, he, you know, does this tar and feathering thing with them, he ties them up, he literally uses them for tiki torches um, for his own backyard soirees. So there's all kinds of evidence of this as to how you know, brutal, in fact, he was. And Peter is encouraging, obviously, the Christian disciples to stay the course. Now, these are extremely faith 
faithful, disciplined disciples that Peter is speaking to because he's in, he's literally saying you are in fact more than likely heading for death as you walk talk in Christ but that there is a glory in this disciplined journey so resist being I guess Peter may say a coward resist the ways of the world that would say run and hide and stand up for the love that you in fact believe in in Jesus Christ so in other words much like again we're honoring our uh, veterans on Memorial Day tomorrow much like that Peter is saying to these steadfast disciples that your death is not tragic and that your death will not be in vain so stay the course and stay disciplined because whatever you do in love will in fact turn itself to gold there's other verses in his script in the um, book of first peter that have this reference of turning uh, to gold. So whatever you're doing in love is never and can never in fact be lost. So you are suffering, but there will be a glory to this. Life or love will turn all of that into a pure goal. That's why he starts it out like you're going through the, the, the fiery test. You know how gold is tested itself by going the fire. So basically, all of you are gold. Within you is an inner being that is pure and beautiful gold. And in order for you to access that gold that is within you, that will allow you and sustain you to stay the course, it will not let you fail. Peter says that we need to humble ourselves. And this is not a passive and a weak word. We tend to think that humbling ourselves is just that, passive and weak. But instead, humbling is when you acknowledge that there is, in fact, something that is so much greater than yourself. We, of course, in the Christian church call this you know, the Trinity, God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. And that this very sophisticated intelligence, which is much greater than you, is always... Um, ...in your own life. That's the goal that is within you. That is, in fact, your inner being. So we need to be helpful to God and allow for ourselves to really radiate and shine just as gold does and that means we need to humble ourselves we need to set that ego self down so that god's love and that gold can in fact rise up that is a goal that is within you and then peter then warns almost as you're doing this humble letting go and letting god to be very careful and watchful. Peter uses the term, you know, the devil. Um, I like to refer to it for me personally, not necessarily a devil or an entity of, of evil or some sense of hell, but our own fearful thoughts in what is oftentimes referred to as the ego. The ego loves nothing more, just like the traditional devil stories tell. It would like nothing more than for you to fail. And when you are forgetting that this glowing gold of God and love lives within you, when you are forgetting that, fear begins to surround us and cover us up like hard marble around a beautiful statue or any other imagery that you, that you can in fact come up with. And the ego loves nothing more than your inner being being covered up and or hardened, so to speak. And that happens by our fearful thoughts. 
and the eagle loves nothing more than when something is going amiss, when we're trying to stay the course of love in Jesus Christ, and we begin to doubt, there's the key word, we will begin to go down this rabbit hole of fear. And then we're going to remember every single evidence in our entire life that was fear-ridden and has something in the past had uh, manifested into some horrible and god-awful thing. That's that ruining rabbit hole that we love to go down. But Peter is suggesting to us, and we don't even have near the chaos and the fears, of course, that those first century Christians did. We're not being lit like tiki torches, you and I. Um, our names are not up on the Memorial Day wall. Uh, we really don't have the same trauma as what the scriptures talk about. So it really should be even easier for us to, in fact, stay the course in faith, right? But again, the eagle will do that towards us and have us wander away. It's no wonder Jesus said with the Last Supper, when he broke the bread and shared the wine, to take and eat and drink and remember me. Because remembering love on the cusp of your greatest fear or one of the worst things that's happened to you or any kind of trickling in evidence that another bad thing is going to happen to you, to remember love and that you are loved and that you are beloved and that you are lovingly amazing, to remember that instead of all of the fear that you're facing, like those first century Christians must have faced, to remember those things about God always being with you and taking you through this journey and will renew you so that your fears will disappear and your journey will be of a pathway of hope. So stay the course, my friends. Resist that fear that we go to so and too, too, too quickly. And remember love. Remember you are love. You are created in love by God. And that is always and forever within you. So there will be no going back to normal for us, no matter what we're experiencing in life, when we resist the doubts and the fear, and live in love. May it be so. Amen.
Now's the opportunity where we invite you to share a part of your life with us, with your community of faith. As you look at different ways in which you can share both financially and with the work of your own hands, the prayers, your time, there are many ways that you can be involved. Both our congregations can, would love if you came in and your appropriately distance and safe moment to work in flower beds, to plant some new flowers, to pull some weeds, be outside and be safe, but help beautify our churches. We continue our ministries in all sorts of different ways, and your gifts make a huge difference. Though we may not be returning to worship soon, we need to begin to prepare. Many of you have made fabric masks and brought them to us. Thank you for that. We continue to need all sorts of hand sanitizers and Clorox uh, bleach wipes and things. So if you see those at the store, buy an extra one and bring it by and drop it off at the church at at some point or let us know and we'll find a way to get that safely from you. There's all sorts of things that we do to make a difference and you are a huge part of allowing us to continue to be God's church at work. So thank you for your generosity. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for allowing us to be, to be the church and not simply to pretend and play church, to be the church in the community and not just be a building. Thank you for all that you do. Let us come now in this time and prepare ourselves for Holy Communion. If you haven't done so already, go and take the time and pull together a bread or a cracker, some juice or wine or something that can be about you so we can share this together and hear these words, beloved friends. People will come from east and from west, from north and from south. They shall come from their living rooms and kitchen tables. They will come from California and New Mexico and Arizona and Manitowoc, Wisconsin and True Rivers. They will come from all over. And because of Christ, we will be united at one table. Though physically distant, we shall be together at one table. So come, all is ready. Let us now take this time to come before the Lord in prayer and to remember that God is here with us. We lift up our hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right for us to give all thanks and praise. We remember, O oh God, in the beginning of time, when you created out of nothing everything. We remember that you declared in absolute love that we were good. And you held us in the palm of your hand. You gave us a garden in which we could live and move but we rebelled. We chose instead to do it our way. And even when you cast us out of the garden, you did not stop loving us. For you gave us clothes and you made sure that we survived. And we did. And the world became populated and you loved us. Even though we turned from you once again. We fell into the powers of the world. We fell into slavery. We fell into oppression. But we cried to you, and you heard our cry, and you rescued us. You saved us. You parted the Red Sea. You gave us a law, and you shaped us once again 
into your beloved community. And we thanked you. And then we went our own way again. We followed after our own hearts. And we followed the ways of power and of greed. But you did not stop calling us back. You sent prophets throughout the ages. You told us that we don't need to offer sacrifices, but instead we need to offer our hearts. It is you, it is all of us that you desired, not just empty prayers and worship, but you required our actions, you required our love, you required that we go and return to the world the love that we first received from you. But we had a hard time listening. Because the temptations of wealth and ego were so great. But you, you loved us still and you humbled yourself. And you came and you lived among us. As Jesus of Nazareth, you showed us how to forgive. You showed us how to love. You showed us how to give our all for you. You broke bread and you shared a cup. And you made a covenant with us. Reminding us that you are always there. That the door is open. For all who desire to come and to follow you. And so now in graciousness, O oh Lord. We share with you all the prayers. Through every time and every place. Hear us now, O oh Lord, as we lift to you the prayers of our community. Loving God, we have lifted up names in the past, and we continue to thank you for these individuals who have been listed in our prayer corner, living with cancer, going through treatment, and seeking recovery. We lift up the name Lane, Jan, Dennis, Kim, and Paul. And we thank you for your ongoing healing in their bodies and providing them with all the resources possible so as the Spirit can guide them for renewal. We thank you for hearing our prayer. We also lift up this day, loving God, with a praise and a bittersweet goodbye for our beloved sister in Christ, Mary and Morgan. We thank you for her waking up in your glory. We thank you for welcoming her home into your loving arms. And bitterly, we ask for your blessing of compassion upon the hearts of her family, her children, and ask for their trust in you and that deep comfort that only you can give. We lift up prayers this day for the Simonis family, for Melanie's co-worker, Amy the mother, where three children have suffered in a car accident and two of the children, Caleb and Shelby, have been welcomed home into your arms. We thank you, O oh God, for your gracious mercy in that they come home to you and live beautifully and eternally. And yet, a family's heart grieves deeply. May they find comfort in their faith resisting any and all doubt that you are with them. And we pray for the child, Kylie, who continues to hang on for dear life to who has been wounded. We thank you for your spirit providing doctors and nurses with the proper care that will restore and renew her body so that she can live to glorify you. 
We lift up prayers this day, O oh God, for Lynn's cousin, her family where a 25-year-old child has died of multiple health issues. May they be comforted too in their faith in you. May your Holy Spirit give to them all the ways that surround their hearts that they may know deep peace and love. We pray for Jennifer's student, Tyler, 16 years old, who died suddenly. We pray for a gratitude, in gratitude for Tyler, of course, being welcomed home into your loving arms. And we ask for your spirit's blessing upon his family and his friends and all his teachers. May they all come to know your great love and may they all find a way, may they find the gold, the gold within what appears to be a tragedy. We thank you for hearing our prayer. We pray for Vicki who has died from cancer. We thank you again for welcoming her home into your loving arms and again, for the Spirit's blessing upon her family and all of those who continue to mourn her passing. We pray this day for Jameson, who is wandering, a veteran, wandering without a place to live. We ask for your Spirit to guide his heart and his mind, that he can receive the proper support and resources and shelter that his life may show that golden shining from within that your scripture spoke about today. We have praise reports this day, O oh God, thanking you for the life of our friend and sibling in Christ, Meredith, as she celebrates her birthday today. We thank you for our sibling in Christ, Savannah, who celebrated her sweet 16th birthday this week. And we thank you for the celebration of birthday for our beloved sister in Christ, Char. May all of these celebrations do nothing but glorify you and that their lives be blessed to live in love. We lift up praise reports this day for our sister in Christ, Marge, for her sister, Virginia, recovering from COVID-19. We give you glory, O oh God, that this will not be that which brings her home to you. Comfort her as she continues to heal, but remains in hospice. Comfort her, surround her with all the love of caretakers that is possible. We thank you for new life in Christ, in your precious son, Benjamin, coming to this world with grandparents Anne and Gary Gold here to welcome him and teach him the ways of love, teach him the ways of Christ. We give you thanks for a successful and safe birth and ongoing recovery for Sarah, the mother, as they plan to bring Benjamin home. And above all today, oh God, we celebrate this Memorial Day tomorrow, remembering those whose lives were given for the sake of their service. The names that have been offered us this day are Amy Kruger, the niece of our friend in Christ, Dan Kruger, who died at Fort Hood. Thank you for continuing to bless her family as their grief turns into gold. And for Jim Clark's loved ones, as he lifted up the names Donald and Barry, George and Gregory. Thank you, O oh God, for the lives that they have blessed us with, the life of service and for your welcoming them home in your loving arms. And as we prayed earlier, we thank you for that deep peace you have bestowed upon all those who continue to grieve, that their grief too be 
transformed into gold as we give thanks for lives that were lived to love and serve us. We pray all of these things and more in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray. Our Father, Mother, Mother in heaven, in heaven holy, holy is your, your name. name. Your kingdom, your kingdom come, come. Your, your will, will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us, give us this day our daily, our daily bread. Forgive us, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. On the night on which our Lord was betrayed, he gathered his disciples together in the upper room. We are gathered this day in our own rooms, kitchens and bedrooms and living rooms and back porches, but yet we are still gathered together so that we may break bread and share the, cup, the feast of the Lord's Supper. So on that night he took bread he lifted it up and he gave thanks to the Lord our God for the food of the earth. He then broke it and gave it to the disciples saying, take, eat, all of you. This is my body given for you. And in the same way, he took the cup, and after having blessed it, he poured it out and told his disciples, this is to be seen as my blood shed for the forgiveness of sin, the cup of new life, and each time you drink of this cup, drink and remember me. Friends, these are the gifts from God, and they are for you, the people of God. So come, for all things are now ready. Thank you. Eat the joyful feast of the people of God. Take and drink. Amen. Let the people of God say amen. Amen. As we continue to gather, there are many community notes for you to remember. As always, we have our daily devotions um, on YouTube and on Facebook. We have Monday Bible study, um, but we're not actually having that tomorrow on Memorial Day, so we're going to come back to our Bible study on June 1st. We have community dinners that are served to go from 5 to 6, where we continue to serve over 100 people every Wednesday night. Um, so your prayers and your donations and the gift of your time is helpful there. If you want to help in a special way, we have some new opportunities coming up with our feeding ministry. As we begin to partner again in the community, we're going to start having Saturday giveaways of uh, prepackaged boxes of meats and vegetables, cheese and milk. Um, so there's different ways. If you have time on Saturday afternoons, let us know and we'll help connect you and how you can help with some of that. As always, you can check in with us on Facebook at MCN United is our main page. 
um, share, um, see all sorts of different comments and thoughts that are going on there. Um, on YouTube, we have children's videos, we have our worship videos, we have our daily devotion videos. There's other special videos that are placed there. So please um, go to that, um, like the videos, but even more importantly, subscribe to that. We've been having a morning fellowship on Zoom before worship each day. We're also going to try that because a few people suggested it. We're going to try to do that actually after worship today. Um, we'll be on that link if it tells you to wait a few moments because we're not quite there yet. Um, that someone will let you in from the waiting room. Um, go ahead and do that. And uh, we'll see. Maybe that will work better. Or maybe we'll start doing it both um, before and after. Remind you that uh, the rummage sales are postponed, so we don't need all of your donations now. On uh, Pentecost is next Sunday, so we particularly want your help. We would like a picture of you or your family or your pets or your whole house decked out in red that we can make some special collage of. Maybe your family is extra interested in even doing a little Pentecost parade. Make some red streamers, some banners, and make a little video of your family doing a parade. We'll use those next week as a way to um, just celebrate the season of Pentecost. But remember that we are here for you. Call us. Leave um, emails or voice messages for us so we can be a part of you. So we can connect with you in every way. As always, but particularly now, we want to remind you that we did not move to online worship er, worshiping we did not shut down our building because some political maneuver. We chose to do this because we love you, because we care about you, because in compassion, we believe that it is appropriate for us to physically distance ourselves for the sake of the public and the community and your health. Therefore, we will continue to worship online, exploring new ways to be the church and not just play church. So even though these are confusing times and different voices of leaders are telling us different things, we continue to stay the course. We continue to believe that the church is not a building, but the church is are the people. So blessings to you as you help us be the church active and alive in our community. And let us receive God's blessing today. We put one hand out with our palm up to remind us that we receive God's blessings. We place the other hand in the air with our palm facing out to the world to remind us that we are givers of God's blessing. And hear these words. May the God, the creator, who made us out of nothing, continue to breathe new life into you each and every day. May Jesus, our redeemer, pick you up and help you and journey with you through the toils of this day so that no matter what happens, we will be wrapped in Christ's grace and we will be able to resist the powers of the world. And may the grace and the love and the community of the Holy Spirit, which sustains us, so that in all humility we may move through this world, not worrying about the powers of the world, but focused on the power of love. Let us do these things, and we and the church will thrive. So go now in peace.
in the name of the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Sustainer. Alleluia. Amen. Amen. And let us sing our sending song. Farewell, good friends. Farewell, good friends. Farewell, good friends. Farewell, good friends. Here and everywhere. Amen and Alleluia.